Hi folks, welcome to another screencast on uh, A2PE exercise physiology. Um, today we're looking at something called the principles of training and something called periodization as well. So guys, this is essential now to your knowledge on how to plan a training program. Okay, so please take notes and bring those notes to your next lesson. So guys, we have finished energy Okay, we are now looking to um, gain knowledge on how to plan a training program which could potentially be a 20 marker in your exams. So we need to, need to look at the basics and these basics are called your principles of, of training. So whether you're uh, Bradley Wiggins or Wigo to me or Shelly Ann Fraser Price or SAFP to me, um, they will use these principles of training within the actual training programs. And the first thing we've got to look at is something called specificity. And this is kind of making sure your training is specific, uh, specific to the sport or activity. And in doing this, all the training benefits you're going to get will be beneficial to that actual sport. So Bradley Wiggins won't necessarily be doing 100 meter sprints because his, um, his race is an endurance based uh, event. So he'll be perhaps doing more kind of aerobic as opposed to anaerobic training. Next one is a progression. Uh, to make sure that the uh, I know, body's fitness levels uh, increase further, training needs to be increased so the body can uh, adapt and get better physiologically. The next one is overload. And this is where your kind of your body is working harder than normal. And it's based um, on something called the FIT principles, F-I-T-T, -T, which we'll look at uh, in detail uh, on the next slide. Next one is uh, reversibility. Um, so if you stop training for any reason through injury or illness or just through burnout, you have reversibility. This is where all the adaptations and the benefits you've got from training kind of gradually diminish. They kind of peter off. Um, so instead of kind of getting a hypertrophy for the muscles, for example, by training, you get something else because you don't train. So if you don't use it, you lose it. Next one is tedium. This is basically kind of um, you know boring um, training methods and making sure that training is is varied to avoid tedium. This can be simply something like adjusting uh, what type of cardio exercise you do, uh, instead of running, go swimming, for example. Okay, so if we look at those five words on the board, the first letters of every single word spells out, out uh, an acronym called SPORT S-P-O-R-T so please remember the principles of training as SPORT and to throw one more in uh, is something called moderation so making sure we do things in moderation if we do too little we're not going to get any benefits if we do things too hard, too fast, too soon in terms of training then potentially uh, burnout injuries uh, will occur Okay, let's look at this overload a little bit in more detail. Okay, and this is where we're overloading the body and we adjust something called the FIT principles. The first one is frequency. Uh, frequency is basically how many times a week do you train? On uh, three to five times a week, for example. Uh, the intensity is basically how hard do you work in training? Do you work at 85% of your max heart rate? Do you bench press 95% of a one rep max? That's your intensity. And then we have time. How long do you spend exercising in that one session? Half an hour, an hour, for example. <clears throat> and the next one is uh, type of training. Fartlek, continuous training, for example, interval training. So if we adapt any of those uh, uh, frequency, intensity, time, or type, we are overloading the body. And we'll discuss about more of that in lessons. This can be done, guys, either through your free weights or even doing cardio work in the gym. Okay, so it's not um, specifically tailored to any method of training. You can do it anywhere. Okay, we're now looking at something called uh, periodization. Uh, periodization is basically where um, training um, is divided into a number of specific blocks. Okay, it's basically used to ensure that athletes reach their kind of physiological peak um, at the right time and most professional athletes and clubs use this uh, in some degree. 
and basically it consists of four cycles. The first cycle is something called a mega cycle and this is where training can be planned specifically over say four years. So as the Olympic Games finish in London this year some athletes will already have a mega cycle plan of training for the next Olympic Games in four years time. But the three cycles that we are really interested in in A2PE are these that follow. We have something called a macro cycle and a, a macro cycle is basically a long-term plan consisting of normally a single year's uh, training. And this macro cycle is normally um, consisted of a number of mesocycles. Now these mesocycles are aimed at achieving a medium term goal and can last for about 4 to 16 weeks. Now these mesocycles are normally broken down into three phases uh, pre season, competition, and off season, which we're going to look at in more detail on the next slide. And then we have a final cycle called a microcycle. This microcycle is normally um, a week's uh, training specifically, so quite detailed um, cycle to look at. Okay, let's look at these mesocycles a little bit more closely. So on the screen we have Peter Ardenwingi, um, star striker for the baggies, as you know well now, and he will have three mesocycles within his uh, within his years um, training plan program, which will be his macrocycle. So his first mesocycle will be his pre-season training. And that mesocycle for pre-season can be, I don't know, four to six weeks of real hard fitness um, work. And then he will have a third cycle, which is a competition. This is where he's maintaining his fitness levels. And his third mesocycle will be his transition or off-season phase where there's no fixtures, no games, but he has to maintain his fitness ready <coughs> for pre-season training um, uh, for the following season. Okay guys, so three mesocycles, pre-season, competition and transition. Okay, on the screen is a, just a graph showing um, a plan of periodization. Okay, and you can see there we have uh, off-season, um, uh, pre-season and in-season as well. So kind of three main um, mesocycles that I've just discussed about. And as you can see, the intensity uh, of training, which is the kind of purple line, increases during um, off-season to in-season and then drops off again during kind of off-season and transition. So we're going to look at, look at these perhaps in more detail in lessons, but this just shows you how training can be planned into different kind of blocks or cycles, as we, as we well know, where they kind of uh, are they very, very relevant to um, sports specifics. Okay, guys, that's about it for now. Um, please bring your notes, and we'll discuss, uh, discuss more in lessons.